Um, is it is it time? Is it time to do another campaign? It's been a while. All right then. Is there no one else that wants to go on an adventure? Oh, Barlin, be a good chap and pick me. It'll be a smashing journey, I tell you. Oh my days! Please no, not again. Well, if that's the best we've got, that's the best we've got, and let's uh, let's head off. I'm sorry, that was pretty awful. Anyway, hello and welcome to the channel. This is Gone with Gandalf, and you join me for the first episode of this campaign. And well, you've probably already seen the thumbnail, so you know what we're going to go for. We're going to go for the dwarves of Khazad Doom, led by the High Lord Balin and uh, his company. And we are, of course, going very hard, very hard, and all that because we're no noobs. Well, we are, but well, we'll get to that. Right, so <laughs> I am going to be doing some house rules and due to a you know i did a poll a couple of um, a couple of months ago now i suppose it was it was last year it was at the end of the angmar campaign when i asked some of you guys which faction to go for at that point you went for easterlings of rune but a close follow-up uh well second was the dwarves of Kazadum with the suggestion that we go for a king of the mountains-esque run i forgot who it was that suggested that but thank you very much it, it was in the comments below uh, of a previous video so that's what we're going to go for okay so obviously the mountains primarily being the misty mountains and then we may well uh drift over in this direction and who knows we might even go and take the blue mountains too so with that in mind, the house rules are such that we can only occupy mountain territories, okay? So you know which ones are the mountain territories by looking into the green books of each settlement. Now, we will allow for some settlements that aren't mountain territories to be taken, but they have to border like... Um, you know, a mountain territory. So, for instance, uh, I don't know, Eregion is a good one. Ostenethil, that's not a mountain territory. But sometimes, you know, because it's part of the campaign, you kind of need to just take out an enemy or something like that. However, to kind of make sure that we stay on the course of the King of the Mountains um, theme, we can only attack during the winter time in any non-mountainous terrain. So that doesn't mean just any, that means all settlements, all armies, we can only attack during the winter. Other than, well, as long as we're not, you know, in mountains, because we are a mountainous folk, okay? So, I mean, that's kind of it, isn't it? Um, other than the fact that there will be only one general commanding each army, so I won't be sacking any generals or anything like that, okay? I'm very much looking forward to this campaign, to be honest. Uh, we haven't played as the dwarves on this channel before, but overview-wise, they are very heavily infantry-focused, so much so that all of their units are infantry. We don't get any cavalry, save for some mercenaries that are rubbish. Uh, excellent armor and morale. In fact, we will have the best armor on Middle-earth, thanks to... Well, if we hold on to Khazad-dum, uh, we'll get mithril armor there. And uh, a notable unit's first legion there, Pike's Legion Shield Guard. I mean, they're not really notable, to be honest. Kazadum Guardians and probably perhaps the best unit in the game, the Dwarven Catapults. I can't wait to play with them and just unleash the grape shot. Oh, well, that's enough of this. I think we can, uh, we can go on in there and take a look. Well, here we are then. Welcome to divide and conquer this is version 4.5 of course and uh well here you are you joined me on the first turn and for those of you that have never played as the dwarves of khazad doom this might be a bit of a surprise because well you could have a look through here you could just pause if you wish i've i have played as the dwarves of khazad doom before um way back in i think it was in the previous version oh there we go. Um, in version 3 point whatever. I can't remember which one it quite was. But I certainly know roughly what happened. But that is definitely new. Right, so. We begin here at Erebor. And we have to follow a script where this uh, red ring is. Which is definitely new. It's different to how it used to be. And, um, well, I'm not going to give too much away, because I'll just let the script run its course. But, of course, Kazadum is all the way over here. In fact, we even have a cheeky little fort there. Cheeky little fort. We can't actually click on it yet, because we're kind of in limbo right now. But, 
uh, diplomatic information. We don't need to concern ourselves with that. But we actually have zero gold currently. Because we have only High Lord Balin here. And should we just have a look at what he's got, okay? So, of course, biography-wise, um, or biographically, he was born in 3rd age, 2763. He was, of course, in the company of Thorin and made the quest uh, for Erebor. And um, he's got some retinue, which, you know, I'm pretty sure they kind of come into it later on. And uh, he does also have a special ability, which will... Well, that's probably going to come into... Um, well, it's going to be useful. And, right, he comes with Balin's Guard. And only he comes with this unit. And is quite possibly one of the best infantry generals in the game. He inspires nearby troops. He no longer scares enemy uh, units, though. I, I think that was a feature before. It may not have been. I My memory is a bit fuzzy. But effective against armor with an 11 attack. I think that has been increased. And uh, he's got 36 total defense with plenty of upgrades to go. Iron plate being, I think, tier four. So he's gonna get he's gonna get a lot of armor on top of that. He'll get into the 40s, which is sensational. But to get this show on the road, um, I guess we'll go to there. Um, and do we have to go to Dale? I I seemingly kind of remember us just having to go there, but I guess we'll go to Dale. Let's go to Dale. Okay, and end the turn. So, Fornos reclaimed, and here we go. Many paths and errands meet. We exposed our intentions to the assembly, and unfortunately, Thranduil and the men of Dale refused to provide any decisive support to our cause. And, well, nevertheless, we have had better results with our kinsmen, optimistic dwarves from Erebor and the Iron Hills have volunteered for our journey. Without delay, we must decide upon which course to take to Moria. There are two proposed routes to discuss, my lord. Please listen carefully. No. <laughs> yes, so, you have two choices to make. You can go the long route, which is, uh, you kind of come all the way around here, I think. I've never done that. Um, it seems a bit foolish, really, because... You'll get to Moria very late, and you'll basically have no money. With the benefit of it supposedly being safer, but I don't know if the Orcs of Gundabad kind of come to... F well, because it's all scripted. But we shall be taking the old forest road, said to be uh, less safe, more dangerous. So we're going to click X. Um, yeah, decline and select the X mark to take this route. That's the one we're going for. And there we go. Ooh, so fancy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our route. And, uh, well, it's just going to go through the journey that has been set for us. And it is going to eventually lead to Moria, or Khazad Doom. And so the journey begins. It is decided, then. We shall risk the shadow of Mirkwood for the sake of time. Our dwarves are ready for whatever we may face. They know what is at stake, and they will do anything for the ancient halls of Moria, of our true home. And um, so you can't take any other settlement but Moria, and no declarations of war. You need to capture Moria no more than seven years. I think we'll probably do that. That's, what, 28 turns? And follow the directions given. So we can't do anything other than... Uh, go straight for there but as you can see we've been provided some units which is very handy and we've also been given 40 grand however i'm pretty sure that is going to start going down now that we've got an army it's not like the our, our denium campaign where you kind of accrue more and more wealth um this is like if you don't have a settlement here you will pay for these units <laughs> so um you don't want to be on the road too long we've been given dragon slayers they used to just be called uh dragon slayers of ered wethrin which are these over here um they're not like we will be able to perhaps recruit them if we are successful in our mountain mission then we've been given some erebor infantry khazard volunteers and um, just some Dwarven labourers, Dwarven travellers, and Balin himself. So we may get some extra units along the way. Who knows? Um, so we just have to follow the path and uh, see 
what happens afterwards. And I don't think there's anything here. Oh, we've got good relations with everyone. Should we just have a quick look at our diplomacy as well? Because um, in case you've never played before, you may have been wondering. So we are allied to all of the dwarves, being two other factions. Dwarves of Ered Lewin and Erebor Dale like us as well as the Anduin Vale, Woodland Realm, and the Elves of Lothlorien. <laughs> Too many R's. Um, right, so we've got a war going on with Dol Guldur and the Goblins of Moria as well. Uh, so let's uh, press and turn. Right. Aye, my king. So, I don't know if... Uh, it triggered there, because it's still showing the uh, red circle there, so I suppose we weren't quite in it. But as you can see anyway, uh, we're down to we're down from 40k already, so we are definitely paying for this this army, but um, yeah, not a whole lot is going on uh, other than the factions that we are at war with already dislike us. So let's just go there and see if that triggers the script. I don't want to move on, because... We have been brought to battle, and this is kind of what I was expecting in the previous turn. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. So, I don't... You don't actually see what they have, but it appears that they are just archers. Some goblin archers of Dol Guldur. So... We've obviously been set up over here. And we've got our own archers. So let's just go forth with Barlin over here. He's going to go in loose formation. And then we'll use our archers to shoot at theirs. Um, he is exceptionally armoured. And with him being our general, we are A-OK -okay with him taking a few losses. Uh, but we're going to need everyone else. So let's kind of be cautious on that front. Oh, they're goblin headhunters. And they are... Oh no, they are archers, but from what I recall, they're pretty good. Yeah, they got a five missile attack. That's uh, that's pretty that's pretty handy. But are they coming to attack us? I feel like they maybe are, but let's uh, have Parlin right there at the front. There's no way he's gonna die. If he does die, by the way, I'm pretty sure that's kind of like the end of the game. Now uh, you have to restart then. So we're in range, and. Should we just... What is their range? How much range do they have? Are they firing at our... By joke! Uh, yes, they are. Right. Dragon Slayers, get over here. We're going to bring you to battle. We're just going to go in with our most elite units. And uh, kind of... We're going to use all of these guys later on. And I think these guys definitely want to get involved. And don't they just look absolutely fantastic? And they have, I'd say they've been buffed because they didn't used to be effective against armor. Now they are. I mean, it makes a lot of sense for them to be effective against armor being called dragon slayers. Dragons tend to have quite a lot of armor. So, um, well, our archers seem to be doing pretty well. These guys have got six armor though. So actually, maybe not. Let's just, let's just go and attack. <laughs> Barlin, in you go. And this is what Barlin looks like. I am sure that they get uh, upgrades. They've got quite a mismatch looking. Like, they've got different shields. They've got different helms. But uh, I am sure that they get upgrades later down on the track. And dwarves do get loads of bonuses from their armor upgrades. So I very much look forward to making a video on that in the future. But let's... Uh, Let's hope that uh, Barlin stays fresh. He's he's somewhere in there. I, I don't actually know quite where. Oh, he's right there. Yeah, he's going to have loads of hit points, though. So in we go with the Dragon Slayers of... Uh, just just Dragon Slayers. That's, yeah, they're just called Dragon Slayers. <laughs> Here we go. And our, our archers are still firing, but uh, we're just going to wait for them to inevitably run away. The enemy army there we go. Battle. Continue battle. There's no point. We lost 23 men. We actually got some friendly fire, which is incredible. Three missile attack <laughs> onto our heavily armored units. But yeah, pretty good kills. Our archers were definitely worthy. Victory. And we have, of course, 
we claimed victory there. I don't know quite why we weren't able to get that in the previous turn, but we made it. Next spot is going to be over here. And um, on we go. We did lose a couple of our Dragon Slayers, but it, I think it's absolutely fine. Like, they will, you know, we'll have enough of them. Come Moria. Hopefully, anyway. We can't actually get any mercenaries, can we? No, we can't. We can't get anything. Uh, this is it for the foreseeable future. So, next turn, we might not even see anything happen. Balin has been given a bride. Oh, and we're going straight into a battle. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you can probably tell that I have not played this through before going into this campaign. But we've been given some woodland sentinels here. Uh, before, I'm pretty sure what would happen is you'd be given a dialogue dialogue box whether or not you wanted to go and help the elves and then you get given some help but this is a big army here and wait what is that they've got they've got a catapult okay um <laughs> they've got a catapult and all these other units well i guess we're gonna have to go on the attack then so we're gonna just run just run to there balin um you you kind of just follow up there because We'll send you into the hardest spot, basically. And then our archers, we're going to bring them all over here. And we're going to try and shoot at those catapults, but we're, we're just so painfully slow. This is probably actually a really good point to bring up the fact that dwarves in general are very slow on the movement side. 95%, whereas men tend to go at uh, 100%. Orcs are also, I think they're set at 95% in general, but they're really quick. 110? Um, wait, hang on. Let's just go on Uruk Bodyguard there. They're 100%. Or maybe these guys are just faster. Well, it matters not. You're just going to go straight over there and perhaps we shuffle across. I really do not want to get shot at by them. I really don't want to get shot at by them. If we just get them to stop right you start just f start firing at whatever you want oh that's not good <laughs> that's not good um but we we've got them no we haven't you need to you need to stop them from doing what they're doing right you're coming over here you're gonna hit that plank you go and attack them so the stats on these guys are two and two so you know, they're they're just trash compared to our 7 and 14, pretty much across the board. And, of course, the Dragon Slayers are super mega overpowered. So, you go in over there. We'll bring these guys out. And they're going to kind of hold on to this flank over here. And... Right, you need to come over here because we do need to make sure that that catapult goes down. Because like, these guys are going to take... We're going to take some losses, definitely, because, you know, you can uh, stun lock an enemy to death, essentially. And I think their general is... Where is their general? It's really hard to see. Is that... Yeah, they're over there. Okay. So we'll just take out this catapult and Barlin, then. Balin is going to probably... We'll send him, I think. I think we'll send him to go kind of up against their bodyguard. But he's over there. So if we could just get him to shuffle through here. Because, like, our archers are going to do plenty of damage. And these elves, we can send them into melee, no problem. And they're firing over there. That's a good target for them. And... Uh, well, I suppose you guys just fire on over there. Like, we outclass these guys so much that this should be reasonably easy. But, oh, they're, they're, there's the uh, bodyguard. Let's go in over there. These guys will be okay if they get flanked a little bit. But those guys are not having a good time. Now, the good thing about these dwarven laborers, though, is that even though they are our militia, and they are the same for all dwarven nations... And they've only got four melee attack. That is still effective against armor. So they'll do reasonably well against even late game units. So once they've got 
some armor upgrades, they'll be useful even then. But should we just, uh, perhaps if we just fire at the Uruk bodyguard, looks like we've absolutely annihilated all this. Like, we probably got some friendly fire. But, uh, who's getting charged? I think we're okay. There's all of our units. Uh, yeah, we've got a nice staunch line here. And like they're gonna they're gonna break sooner or later. Let's bring these guys actually over here, so then we can fire at these folks over there. In fact, some of them are already breaking by the looks of it. So Barlin, <laughs> you're just gonna go and you're just gonna go and chase after that bodyguard. The enemy are badly because we'll just stay go they down. Oh, is that the only unit we've got? Oh no, we've got two units there. Okay, that's fine. I thought we only had that one unit. Once this guy goes down, though. They will all rout. And it will be glorious. Right. Um, let's bring these guys a bit further around. That way... I mean, I, I think we, it might be a bit redundant, really. Yeah, you guys just go into there. See, look at this. We are being completely outnumbered. But our dwarven steel is just so great. So, so fancy. Very, very fancy. Right, I think uh, you guys have probably done enough on the bodyguard. And if we can find someone else to fire at. But, you know, just fire at those routing units. Just fire at them. Because if they do come back, then, you know, they'll be diminished. And we'll send these guys to flank around there. Barlin going in. Let's use stubbornness of the dwarves. Reduce some of that uh, fatigue because I think some of these guys have been fighting for a while. Yeah, they're already winded. And uh, you should do very well against the Uruk bodyguard. How are we doing over here? Not, not terrible. Not great either. They're not outstanding units. But if we just bring our elves over here, then we'll scatter the rest of these from behind. And it'll be all fine. We don't need to actually run them down or anything as far as I'm aware. And, uh, yeah, you just fire at whatever you wish. And I think it's pretty much game over at this point. But, yeah, they're routing again. So we'll just keep on firing at them. And that'll do the job. The enemy, the enemy army and just like that, field. we don't need to chase them, I don't think. So that's probably enough. Clear, clear victory. We lost 362 dwarves. Very sad. But we did, I mean... We did defeat that army. I don't think there's any repercussions to this. Look at that. Dragon Slayers. 568 whelps destroyed. 558 for the Khazad Volunteers. 401. <laughs> like, look at these numbers. The Woodland Sentinels didn't even kill that many. But, I mean, you know, it's just like, wow. And down they go. And... The next stop is over there, which I believe is where Erin Tholen is. And is there some kind of thing that's going to... Oh, Elven support arrives. Okay, such a surprise has happened this day. Despite the lack of support at the meeting in Dale, Elven archers have arrived to guide us through Mirkwood. Um, oh, excellent. Yes, so we will be going towards Erin Tholen. I didn't miss anything in the script there, so I was worried a little bit. Because my mouse has kind of uh, started, uh, well, I, I have, my mouse has started uh, double clicking when I press the left mouse button. So uh, probably spamming too much and things like that has kind of reached the end of its lifespan almost, but I'll keep on using it. <laughs> sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, relations improved, dot, okay, whatever. Um, but I can't actually click on this, so that's annoying. But let's just have a look at... Is he, has he got a bride? No, he doesn't. Perhaps we'll get one next turn. Okay. Well, here we are, Erin Tholen. I think we'll probably be okay here. And uh, we'll see what the next stage brings us. Well, I actually just had to save the game and then reload it. Because I couldn't click on this. And it wouldn't allow me to actually end the turn. So, watch out if that happens in your campaigns, but right, now we can actually end the turn. And the next turn then, elves under siege. Our rearguard scouts have reported a terrible scene. 
orcs from Dol Guldur are assaulting the elven town which hosted our company, allowing us to rest. We should return the aid given to us by helping lift the siege. Do we assist the elven people? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, absolutely. This is Erin Dolan, and these are the elves that are, you know, here. <laughs> this is an elven castle. And we are reinforcing. We are these guys over here. Uh, we need to make it in here before they break down the gates. And they do have things such as catapults. So, and they've... Ooh, they've got Castellans of Dol Guldur here as well. Right, so, from what I remember, having done this before, is you just basically have to run everyone in. There's no... <laughs> There's no grand grand tactic. You just run everyone in as fast as they can. And eventually they will start to bombard our gates, I think. Of course, our elven bowmen here, they will make it here a lot faster than everyone else. Yeah, I can hear the catapults now sounding off. Um, so hopefully we make it here in time. So make sure our archers are not doing anything stupid. Take them off skirmish and things like that. And our allies, they will have to hold the line until we make it there. Because we are extremely slow. And, uh, yeah. The AI does not help themselves at all. They just got absolutely bombarded in the gateway. And they're sending woodland scouts to their death. What is this madness? Six, six, and eight. And they're sending them into melee to die. Just, wow. Let's have a look at what else they've got here. Um, some of our units are actually just about in the settlement. So that's good. Because, like, <laughs> the AI is rubbish. Uh, they got Dol Guldur host. Uh, their stats, 5 and 9. Castellans of Dol Guldur, 11 and 28. Outstanding stats. Mirkwood Uruk, 6 and 18 spearmen. Uruk slayers, 8, 7, 13. Armor piercing, looking very formidable. Um, they are basically just uh, orc maulers on steroids. They've got Dolgaldor archers. They are five, three, and five. They've got two of them. Catapults, just a catapult, and then these are Uruk slayers there as well, and Mirkwood Uruks. These are post barracks event units, and they're sending some Dolgaldor host over there by the looks of it. Right, but we've got these folks over here. Right. And a really cool thing you can do is pop them up on here. You can actually get up on here quite quite easily, in fact. Uh, there's only one way on there, and it's uh, through here. And then you can traverse these, I don't know, catwalks all the way around, and you can actually put them up here, and then they've got a really nice um, line of sight. And there's another one over here, but, you know, that's not quite as good unless they're coming from i don't know from that direction this is quite fancy and then you get up there by uh, this chute just here i don't think there is one over here no so you've got no chance of being flanked by doing so um so our elves they're getting in position and the dwarves are just about making their way in and it has begun. And our Erebor infantry have made it over here. Um, Woodland warriors there. They have allowed the enemy to come in through that gate. How could this happen? So let's uh, turn and face, I suppose. And we've got some miners there. And let's have this unit then. We're going to start shooting at whatever we can. It's a pity that we can't actually move into that spot right there but it is what it is and um yeah it's just a real mess isn't it we've got units of dwarves trying to get into position some just absolutely failing well if we can get one here or one there that's better than nothing else and then we can at least fire in over there we're going to try and give ourselves a breather and we're going to shoot at some of these fools it looks like, are we are we getting good shots there? It does kind of look like we are. Their general is right there, so they're going to have a really hard time. And they're sending some Uruk slayers around there. We can't really use these guys to fire. Because um, <laughs> they will fire at our own units. 
Why, oh why, can we not go there? I have no idea. But we do have this unit and this unit over here. And we have the benefit of these towers. So let's let's kind of use that to our advantage. But, oh, that would take absolutely ages for them to go around. So we're just going to hold right here. We'll have that tower. And hopefully that will do the trick. And we're only very tired now, so that's good. Our allies are just stuck at the gate. Um, I don't even see any... And this is all going to come down to us. If you look at here, well, 11% of our total combined force have died. Um, so that's quite a nice death blob to fire at. However, I have sent our other unit of Elven Archers over here because it's clear to me that we cannot use our ammunition very well over there. So we're going to bring them over here and then hopefully try and fire into that. And our uh, units are now only winded. Are Some are warmed up. If we continue like this, Dragon Slayers are warmed up. We're going to require them to fight against their heavily armed Castellans, no doubt. And Barlin as well. And they've demolished that unit over here of elves. So, and they're not coming any closer. How are we doing over here? Well, we are heavily outnumbered. And I think perhaps we should... I mean, we've got Barlin over here. We can bring can bring him over here. And I do apologize about the elves thing. This is the way. This is the way. Advance. Advance. Um, that is just the AI. I can't, I can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. But can this, can this tower shoot a bit more? Is it even firing? It's not. What is this madness? Right. Miners, then. Uh, you're going to go all the way around. Uh, I, I mean, I could send Balin over there, but, you know, he's much better. These guys, they're just there to provide additional support I think I think these guys should be able to hold on what are their stats again was it 9 and 14 against 5 and 9 even if they are really tied I think we'll be okay um, but Barlin's just there to make sure and now then these guys are in position and we've used a decent chunk of our ammunition their general is in that so the longer he lives is it's, it's good, but, I mean, it shouldn't have too much of a bearing. Oh, they've got some reinforcements coming over there. But, yeah, let's just fire into that. And what's this? Doggledore archers. Right. You're going to go and kill them. Just go in there and kill them. We can't allow them to fire at our woodland brethren. They're not really brethren, but they've got very little armor. So we're going to go straight in there. We're going to use our Woodland Sentinels over here to kind of, the once they've clumped bloody. up, we'll use them. We and let's just bring, I don't know really, if they if they do kind of come up to here, then we'll want to have our Dwarven Volunteers, our Dwarven Archers there just to fire at them. But I don't think it's going to get to that at this point. So actually, yeah, let's, let's just bring them down. Let's bring them down to uh, this point here somewhere. Our ally lies dead. Slain by the enemy. That's unfortunate. Him, lest our allies lose heart. That is unfortunate. But they should be fighting over here anyway. So, um, like, they'll they'll come and uh, be in the town square. So, I think they'll be okay. I think it's going to be okay, everybody. So, let's get these guys into position. These guys are still firing. And I imagine they're doing okay. Um, that is the oh they're routing now so now they are going to be coming straight through those Kazad volunteers and these guys I think are not going to be required over here on the flanks let's just have the miners hold that I suppose and what is this pathing can you please 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 get into position Oh dear, they are actually going around that way. Right. Stay, stay there, stay there. Because we are going to need those towers to do some damage. How we doing on this side? Well, we've beaten them, as, as expected, really. And from here... Oh, they've got some Mirkwood Uruks on the way. Only one unit, but what we can do is 
What are they doing? Where are they going? What? It, what? What the actual hell? Did I click on there? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, they're coming now anyway. Um, and these Mirkwood Uruks, there's only 58 of them. I think what we could do is just flank them. And then we can kind of come from behind all of that to deal with the rest of the army. But there's very little here. There's a catapult crew. Uruk slayers, Catalans of Dog... Oh, are they not sending anything over here then? Oh, there's Dolgaldor host there. Right. Mirkwood Uruks then. Sanning uh, very orcish. In comes Barlin. For cars. Um, I nearly said Cars Modan, but we're not. We're not. That's a different franchise. For Kazadoom. Baruch Kazad. Kazad Al Menu. And uh, they're going to go down pretty darn quickly, to be honest. I don't expect Barlin to be taking many losses. And once that is done, where did those Castellans go? Where are they? Are they... Are they... Oh dear, did we chase them? Oh, oh, that's not good. Well, Barlin's going to have to come over here real quick. But we are going to... We're not going to run away. Because, I mean, there's no point. Because they are faster than us. So, um... Oh dear. Let's use these guys in melee. Let's bring them down. Because I'm pretty sure we lose them after this battle anyway. So it would be pointless to keep hold of them. And do we send in another unit? We could do. What are we firing at currently? Are you just firing at them? Like, we do have plenty in reserve. But I don't think we... We, wa we don't want to throw away units, certainly. So, but let's just throw them in over there. Actually, we'll throw in the 83. Our Woodland Sentinels have come in. And they just ran away. Look at that. They just ran away. They're not even routing. Madness. And uh, Barlin has defeated what was over there. And he is making his way over here to deal a crippling blow. Let's just get these elves right at the front. Because, I mean, Barlin needs to get over there, really. Those Castellans are going to do a real number on us. But it's okay, because we've got our Dragon Slayers. They are fresh. They're going to come over here and uh, help Barlin out when he eventually makes it over there. So if you'd like to just attack whatever is there, because you're not going to make it past them anyway. And uh, send you guys into melee with that. And, well... You're kind of useless at this point to be firing at anything. I and mean, this is well under control. Well under control. But I think everything here should be okay to take out those. And as soon as Barlin over here is finished with his catapult crew, then we can move on and help out from behind. But I think the Dragon Slayers aren't too far off. But, oh, these Castellans, man. They're dealing some seriously fat damage to us. And now the two of these two units, the Dwarven Laborers, pose a much greater threat to the Castellans because of that armor piercing. How much armor do these folks have? 18! 18 armor! So that's 9 off of that. Um, but they are locked. This is, of course, the unit with which uh, the two other Nazgul that Dol Guldur have come as their bodyguards. Uh, so, of course, there's Kamul that he comes with. Kamul Shadow Guard? Was it Shadow Guard? Shadow Knights. They are the mounted, uh, like, very good cavalry, shock cavalry unit. Whereas the other two come with just this. And then you do have another unique general as well, which are just, like, Shadow Rangers or something like that. Right, so in they go. Going in with a mighty charge, and Barlin, he's finished. He's finished over here, that is. He's not, he's not dead or anything. And we are going to have to go and kill those Castellans off. And I think everything else is dead. Everything else is dead or has routed. That is good news then. Let's send in these elves as well. Because as I say, we're not going to have much use of them anymore anyway. In our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. Victory will be ours. But these Woodland Sentinels, they have been a real credit to the Woodland Realm here today. We're probably taking a few bits of friendly fire, but if we can just get Barlin involved. Nice. If we could just get Barlin involved, though, I think this would go a lot quicker. Let's just run him through. 
run him through there. So there's still nine to go. This this could yet take a while. Because they've got so much damn armor. Last one to go. That's enough for us. End the battle. Clear victory. I mean, the, the elves, how did they still get 902 kills, given how awful they were? Erebor Infantry, 205. Khazad Volunteers, 178. Woodland Sentinels, 475. Wouldn't it be nice just to have them forever? Now, I wouldn't look too much into the casualties sustained, because I'm pretty sure something's about to happen. Mwahaha! And also, as you can see there, our army got moved from there to there over the course of that end turn. Um, even as we kind of zoned in, we were, we were there. Um, but... Uh, Right, uh, very good. We are no longer the richest faction. Those darn Easterlings. We can't click on this thing. Oh dear. Well, that is what we've got left. Um, not fantastic. Oh, and there we go. Siege broken. A great victory has been won in Mirkwood. We have defeated the enemy and sent them back into the darkness whence they came back from. The elves thank our company and in return they healed our injured men. And as you can see we kept all of them. Although did we lose? I think we let like have lost a unit of arable infantry there. Um, that's a shame. Gave us 3,000 gold as a token of friendship. So aside from us losing that one unit that's that's pretty good. So we're going to go to there. Was it, was it there? Come on red ring. There we go. Uh I think. Can we end the turn? The time's come last. To arms! Another battle that we have been forcibly put into, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I saw the size of the battle standard, and yes, it's just two units of trolls. And I'm pretty certain this is the final battle that we will have the assistance of the elves. So, we are going to use these guys to their fullest extent. I uh, probably shouldn't have done that because I could have got a cheeky volley off there already. But I want these guys to die. I don't want my dwarves to die. If I can at all help it. Right, just stop right there. Both of you, just start firing. What is the uh, 8 missile attack? They're not that great in melee, to be honest, for a post-barracks event unit. They've really nerfed that side of the woodland realm. But how much armor do these have? 10. And they've got the five hit points, so we're gonna we're gonna need a lot of these shots. Right, it's time to run. They are already running out. Oh, look at that! We've actually killed a few. How often do you see that? I mean, I don't. That okay? Now you're gonna run. <laughs> you're gonna run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. Quicker. Run away. Faster. Run away. Stronger. Yeah, you're gonna get charged. It's unfortunate, but. You know, we, we can't actually... We have no further use of you after this. So, we're going to keep on firing. Oh, our own archers are just absolutely terrible. Right, you're going to come forward. And why did you stay in melee? Please, please run. Please refrain from said action. And we could send in... Like, our best unit our is going to be the, the Dragon Slayers. We'll they are the our best unit at dealing with all these. And at this point, I think our archers have kind of done all that they can. But we've seen that these folks can actually kill some of them. So if you'd like to get over here, we, we might yet come out of this with very few casualties. I'm going to have Balin just here. We'll send him in at a, a reasonable time. Because actually, I, I want to keep hold of these Dragon Slayers. I think they're going to be very important. We can't really get any of them um, for a very, very long time. So, right, you just fire at them. Fire at them. Fire at them. And stop what you're doing. Fire at them. Get these Dragon Slayers kind of in position. How many are there? There's 11 there. And then the other one, there's 7. Right, just keep firing. Keep firing. Get another volley. Come on, get another volley. One more, one more. See if you can kill one. There goes one. We've got them in melee. Come on, get another volley. Get another volley. Do it. Do it now. Shoot. 
Nice. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is exactly what you want to see. Right. Give him another. And you folks come over here. And I think, Barlin, you are A-OK -okay to go in there. I think I think now is the time. Right. That is all done. And send you guys into melee. Go against the two of them. And then bring these guys into melee as well. Because this is definitely... I believe it is the final time we get to use them. Let's use Stubbornness of the Dwarves as well. Reduce our stuff. What is happening here? That is the general, is it? That is the general. Well, let's just kill this this troll right here. Just, just, kill, just kill this troll here right. Right there. You guys fire at them. And we could just leave it at that. Are winning the battle. Nice. So We've we killed the general, this, and it is just the one the troll enemy. left, and he's surely going to go down momentarily. Elves, right. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. And he goes down. I'm calling it. There we go. Clear victory. Really good win. I don't think we lost too many. I mean, we did lose quite a lot of the Khazad volunteers. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's unfortunate. And down go the trolls of Doggledore. May they not be a thorn in our side again. Right. And now, we've made it out of the woods of Mirkwood. Very good to see. And the Andwood Vale are now allied to the Woodland Realm. Not entirely um, unheard of. Huzzah! A gift from the council. 2,000 gold and elven support departs. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, the mission was complete, but we have left Mirkwood. It's not the end of the world. I'm pretty sure at some point we are going to be able to recruit some mercenaries. Um, because this is not a lot, you may notice. We are lacking quite quite a force there and that is not a very large army and is exactly why I wanted to hold on to those dragon slayers because otherwise it's going to be a real pain but I think now that we have left Mirkwood I am going to leave it there next time we shall make it to Moria we will take it but I think we've got a couple more hindrances along the way so I hope that you've enjoyed this first episode into Barlin's expedition to Moria. Hopefully it's going to be successful in more ways than one. And uh, thank you very much for watching. But for now, I'm going with Gandalf. Good day.